What's going on, everyone? And welcome to the Biotech Buzz, your favorite show for all things bio. Oh, my camera's freezing a little bit. Your favorite thing for uh, your favorite show for all things biotech stocks. Excuse me. I'm here today with, of course, the biotech queen herself, Vivi. What's going on, Vivi? Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm improvising today. I have my clean ladies that kicked me out of my office. So here I am <laughs> outside. How's everybody doing? Let's see. Let's see in the chat. How are we doing? Um, oh, someone. They're already talking about their tickers. Um, Min says, hi, Vivi. Hello. You know what? Can I, um, let me just, uh, I, I think I, I wanted to grab a pencil. Maybe I can, I, I just, I'll enter in my phone because people are going to give me tickers and I don't have, uh, maybe you wanted to, to write them down for me, Rohan, and then text me as people sure. ask, you know. Um, but I did have uh, some chance to go over some of the stuff. Do you want to um, first put some of my stocks that I think are doing really, really well? ARDX, I think it's finally moving. Yes, it is. Um, let's pull that up here. Yes. ARDX, there we go. Woohoo! Yes, I expect... Um, FDA approval, who knows? It might come earlier than July 29th. I would have not waited, you know, um, because um, it, they just want an extension for the labeling. So it might come any minute. And then um, if you can put it up, um, be, um, let's put SCNS is doing really well today as well. All right, what are we at? It was doing $3, well. $3.50? Yeah. yeah, so we spoke to, it was way below $3. Yeah, it went down today. But I expect an um, October approval, so we still have time to um, get this um, this uh, company approved. And I'm sure you guys probably want to hear some new stuff. You guys gave me some tickers, and I wanted to um, go over them. And then... Uh, uh, for next week, I uh, will, uh, whatever tickers you guys give me today, I'll take a look. So if you want to put on the board, um, DMTK. Dermatech. Yeah. So it's a local company here. It's my neighbor. It's in La Jolla. Oh, really? Okay. Awesome. So yeah, we have I yeah, I thought this company was really, really interesting because they do have some, um, I've had a skin cancer before. Thank God, not melanoma, but it's it. Uh, they take they chop you off when they took. Um, they've done a biopsy. I'm sure anybody that have done in our chat, it's a nightmare. They take a huge chunk. So what this company has is a way to detect melanoma by just putting a sticker on it. So um, really, really exciting. They had a, a 60 percent of uh, over year over year of a growth. Um, my, uh, they have 120 million dollars in cash, uh, which is really, really good. Uh, the 1.3 billion market cap, um, 42 percent of institutional ownership. My question, my only concern here is. Um, you know how how fast the sales are gonna catch up to the um, the burning rate. You know they're burning a lot of cash um, monthly, so that would be my concern as we watch. You know um, we, we watch every quarter. Um, two point two million dollars in sales is not gonna cut, obviously. So I'm hoping that um, they can do better. You know as the quarter progresses. So. That would be one. Um, if you put that in comparison, BCRX has a much, much bigger, um, a much bigger uh, market cap. You know, um, now it's uh, BCRX is no longer considered a micro cap company, so they got bumped out of micro cap. Um, but they did nineteen million dollars in revenue, so for the quarter. So um, you know, they're catching up to the burning rate a lot quicker. Um, so uh, that's one of the things that you, you guys wanted to take a look when you're looking at uh, how successful the launch is going to be. And then let me tell you guys something. You know, everyone talked to me about um, Kinekisa, K-N-S-A. So pull it up. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to understand why it didn't, it didn't get any traction uh, for the Pedufa. So... I um, I bought a pre-Pedufa. I knew was gonna 
I knew that was going to be approved because I know people that work there. Um, but I, they, there was no traction at all for the FDA. Um, they have a, a drug for a pericarditis, which is inflammation around um, the heart, and that uh, they're splitting uh, profit with Regeneron because it's a second indication to a, gener a, gener a Regeneron um, uh, uh, drug. So they're going to have to split the profit. But I just had a text from one of my doctors today, and he said, oh, the Kinekito rep stopped by in my office. He's like, one, I, I'm not seeing a lot of, of these patients. It's a, it's a rare disease. And he's like, two, the problem is it's injectable, but you got to keep refrigerated. And these doctors, especially cardiologists, would actually to get a fridge just to refrigerate a medication. Because if you go to family practice offices, they all have a medication for diabetes. They have injections for diabetes. Cardiologists don't have anything that they have to store in, in a fridge. So um, my doctor's like, I, I'm probably not gonna, you know, he is a big cardiologist. He's like, I'm probably not gonna use that drug. One, I don't have a refrigerator in my, in my office and two, I don't see a lot of the patients. So maybe that's why we're not seeing a lot of traction here. Uh, and you guys have asked me before. My only suggest, I mean, if I was the company, I would do like a coupon, you know, so you get like a free sample coupon to pick up at the pharmacy. A lot of companies do that. I would versus having a sample injection sample where uh, doctors have to refrigerate refrigerate which is kind of hard um and then i want to talk to you guys about a company that one of you guys told me that i think look looks amazing um if you can put it up a-g-e-n so uh, so okay i wanted to tell you guys uh the mtk had enough cash but it's not the 120 million. Who has a 120 million millions is AGEN. I got my notes confused. So this company here, I think this company is gonna be amazing. Um, uh, thank you so much for the tip. I'll, I'll definitely uh, want to initiate a position here. They have 66% uh, institution ownership. They have a partnership. So um, in addition to Bristol Myers Crib, uh, Beta, Receptor. Um, they have a partnership with Insight. Insight owns some shares of this company. They have a partnership with Merck and partnership with Gilead. Uh, the Insight collaboration involves um, antibody, antibody targeting cancer. They have a lot of the CAR T. Um, so they, um, Insight have bought 905 million in uh, AGEN shares. So I think that's very bu bullish. Um, and then, um, they are receiving royalties. So AGN is receiving royalties from all these companies. Um, so also the Zoma XOMA agreement also include the same royalty milestone percentage from um, Anginus, a collaboration with the Merck. So um, they are eligible to receive $85 million in milestones and royalties. So the Gilead agreement was inked in 2018 and in originally involved up to five uh, immu immune oncology compounds. And uh, as a part of the collaboration, Engineers receive $150 million consideration consisting of a, a cash of 120 million and an equity investment of 30 million. So Gilead terminated one of the candidates in February, but they still have the option to use the other, the AGEN antibody. Um, so, Angenos is eligible to receive $100 million if Gilead elects to opt in both programs for up to a billion dollars in bio bucks and royalties on that sale. So, Angenos is responsible for the development of both compounds. So, I like the pipeline. I like that they have $120 million in cash. I, um, I like the institutional ownership. I like all the partnership. I think he, um, EGEN is definitely a buy for sure. Definitely a buy. And then um, another company I wanted to talk to you guys about it is um, ATNF. So I bought calls because there's a lot of going on with the company, and I still feel like it's very, um, it's still very under uh, value. ATNF. So they are adding to the microcap index, which closes tomorrow. So tomorrow, and uh, they have a, a 10k, a 10K filing before the end of, the, of June. And um, 
they have a lot of short heavy, uh, short interest. They're very good candidates for short squeeze. They have a low market cap. They have a good pipeline. Um, and, uh, and I think there's a lot going on for the stock. So I bought in a money, out of money options for November. I'm going to try to buy for January as well. I like this company, at and F. So, um, and then uh, if you can put one up, uh, Rohan, PTIX. Somebody on Twitter was giving me a hard time. So I'm going to tell you guys why I bought here, right? So I bought it here at a two, what is it now? 298. I bought it at 280, 80, um, I'm at 285 because I added a little bit more. So that's my average. They are supposed, they have a, a really, really low um, float. So only 6 million um, of the float. Oh, I was going to tell you guys something too. Um, can you check for me the only problem? Okay. The only problem I don't like by AGEM is the float size, guys. 192 million shares at the float. That's going to be a lot of volume to move that stock. So BTX, somebody was teasing me saying, did you look at their um, S3? Um, they are going to dilute the heck out of the stock. Um, I'm not holding this long term. I'm holding this because they're going to have an investigation, new drug application, uh, news by the end of the quarter, which is by June 30th. And because the float is six million, I am just trading the techno, the technical, you know, the chart and also the catalyst. But it's one of those companies I will not hold long term. Why? Because they are issuing uh, the S3 um, sec files talking about issuing shares whenever they feel needed to raise money. So I don't like that at all. So I'm definitely um, uh, not investing long term here. But I think that would be a really good candidate for squeeze for sure. Uh, the last time it went up to seven. So we still have that, that gap to fill. Um, so if we can fill the gap at least to five or six bucks, um, I, I'm holding. So it's, uh, I think it's going to be good short term. And then um, what else is going to tell you guys? Um, you want to put KMPH? People cons consistently remind. I wanted to talk to you guys about something because it's really hard for me um, to... Um, to talk about the whole DD and the show, because the show is so small, so I was able to cover one drug. But if you guys go on Reddit, there's a guy there that owns $5 million worth of KMPH, and he posted the best DD I ever seen on KMPH is on Reddit. So if you guys are curious about KMPH, I would definitely go on Reddit and read the DD on the company. It's, uh, it's an amazing DD. So for me, that's a hold. I am holding at least until um, 30 by the end of the year, and I probably hold some long term for a possibly possible buyout because I think this company has a huge um, candidate to be buyout. Travels Mickle was the uh, founder of Vivance, and they sold to Shire, which became Takeda. So um, he wants to sell the company. He is, I think, he's a genius. He's really good about throwing PRs and really good about making deals. So I am holding this company long. For sure. Uh, and then do you guys have any questions, Rohan? Yeah, so I have been taking notes. Um, Are you just on like the, all the little tickers that have been coming through the chat. So I yeah. got a list of them. Yeah, if you can just throw at me so at least I have an idea. Yeah. So um, let's see. There's here. I'll just read off the list and yeah, then you decide where you want to go. Yeah. All right. So we have CBBT or PH, Eton, PRVB, Vaxart, VXRT. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's go a little bit one at a time. So CBBT. Oh, my God, you guys. That um, A friend of mine, he is a long term investor. He's somebody that I, I trust his DD fully. Um, my five thousand dollar investment turned into a fifty dollar investment. I'm holding the, the shares at this point. Um, just to see what's going to pan out. Uh, you know, you can win them all. I really trust. I mean, the DD was solid with with the partnership. Um, and uh, I don't know what's going on with this company. I think because they're not SEC compliant, I think that's the, some of the problems that they have to uh, fix. Uh, at this point, I have $80 in my name on this company. I'm just going to hold, you know. And then uh, do you want to go to ORPH?
What is ORPH right now? I can see. Okay, 782. I have to tell you guys, I bought it a little bit here at a 770. Um, I have a small little shares because remember the last time there was a short squeeze, it took to, to 77 and the second time around took to 23. They're really good about issuing PRs, you know, about ownership. And I feel like now this company is owned by the apes. And I think that we're just going to move this uh, into a short squeeze. So I am um, part of the, the army and I bought it back some because I feel like that squeeze is going to end up coming. Uh, unfortunately, they got a, a complete response letter. And the good news is I don't think they're going to have to redo his studies. They're just going to have to resubmit the data. So that should have taken no more than six months. I still believe in a company long term, you know, for sure. But um, yeah, what else, Rahan? All right. Uh, next we now, have Eton. Oh, I don't. Eton has another uh, another uh, approval in August. My question is: I know he they had a two approvals, not a significant disease state for the first one. I don't know what the second one, but I remember that one of the companies, one of the products they sold already to another company. So I wasn't too excited about Eton. I'll take another look for a next week for you guys. And what else? All right, up next is PRVB. PRVB, I feel like I've known this company before. Prevention PR... Bio. Just a second, let me just take. Um, okay, let me just look at the the pipeline because they don't have an, uh, an idea here. Oh, here's one of those things where the pipeline is not great. It doesn't show you the, the, it doesn't show you what, in what stage they are. Celiac disease. Okay. Um, I'll have to take a, a deep look here because the, the pipeline and the type one diabetes. Oh, okay. Is that the one that they were curing type one diabetes? I thought there was a company there that's curing type one diabetes. I wonder if that's the one. Um, if you hear, if you see the, the chat and somebody answers, that would be great. Um, next. All right. Yeah, I was trying to figure out that diabetes thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, prevention. It says this company's product candidates include for the inception, delay, prevention of type one diabetes. Yeah, so that, I think that, that's a really good company. They, are, it's, um, it's not a me too. They're actually bringing something that's going to prevent. Um, that's amazing, you know, for anybody that um, that have, uh, you know, borderline. The problem is, uh, uh, a lot of the the type one diabetes is uh, hereditary. You know, it's not because of obesity. So I wonder how are they going to be able to prevent that? Because you prevent, uh, you can prevent diabetes by regulating um, blood sugar levels for the type two, but it's usually just by diet, exercise, and sometimes you can just take some uh, diabetes medication to lose weight to regulate your blood sugar, so you don't become diabetic. So that's an interesting one. I'll take a look, but I I think I heard good things about it. So that that uh, that's one thing I remember. See, I have a good memory. Look at that. I didn't even <laughs> know. Like I'm like, is that the one with the Prevention diabetes. Uh, yeah. so that's pretty good. I was yeah. impressed. Out um, of like 500 biotechs, right? I'm like, <laughs> there's a, a lot of companies. Um, Up next is Vaxart, VXRT. Ah, oh, is that the whole COVID thing, right? The Not whole so thing. much COVID. They, so they've been on our show before. Uh, they did, they're partnered with Johnson & Johnson to some degree, but they're mostly focused on other vaccines that are just... Um, it's basically making the vaccine a pill versus a shot. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> How long are you going to have to take, though? That's the thing. If I'm taking one pill and I, I get immune from, then it would be great. But if I have to take the pills for three or four months before I can I can have a plasma study levels and I can prevent myself, just give me a shot. You know, I, so, think, I think their goal is, at least when they came and spoke on the show, their, they, their goal was a one pill sort of situation. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Anybody would take that in, in a minute for sure. Yeah. No, I heard, I heard great things about them, but it was the whole hype of a COVID too. I, I didn't get in earlier, you know, but it has taken a huge dive. huh? What was the high there? The 52 week high. Let's take a look. Uh, 
know. It looks like it was 12, 12, 7, 12, 80 almost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you still have a 40% upside. Um, as it depends on a catalyst, it's always good to to swing uh, these companies into catalysts. You know, you can make good money. Uh, That's interesting. What I'm in the that comments, Sky in the comments said one pill every eight months. Interesting. Okay. That's still that not too bad. It. That's not bad at all. Yeah. That's, that, that would be really cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, man. All right. Uh, up next, TBIO. I have not heard about this one. I have never heard about this one. I will definitely uh, put it here. TBIO. Okay. TB. TB. Yeah, I, I can text. I, I'm texting you the whole list. Okay, so. okay cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, all right. Well, let's go to the next one. N Tech. N T E C. N T E C. Uh, never heard of that. So I have to, um, I come promise you guys, I'll do, yeah, I'll come back to that one. I gave you guys a GEN. I think that, that, that can be the next fate, you know, one day with all those, those, uh, developments and partnerships. It's awesome. That's awesome. Um, okay. NBSE. I, I feel like a lot, a lot of this list I haven't heard of. No, never heard of. I mean, that's good. I want to hear a new companies that we haven't heard, you know? Right, right. That's, yeah, lots, lots of new takers to look at. Um, yeah. AK, AKBA, I think we know this one. Yeah, uh, I had it, then I got bored. It, it's just another Me Too product. It's, um, okay, ARDX is a phosphate bar, uh, binder. I think this is a potassium binder. It's for patients with dialysis. It's yeah, it's it's. I'm sure it's okay, but it's not for me. It's like nothing special. Nothing special. I used to actually own the 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 drug that um they merge with uh a, they they merge with the Kerex K E R Y X and I own the company for that. But now there's so many other competitors in the market. Um, it, it just didn't pick my interest. I used to have it and I, I sold, you know, because it wasn't moving, but nothing, not nothing against Akibia. I just feel like there's a lot of other good companies out there. Nice. Nice. All right. Um, ATHA. AT, no, never heard of. No. Pharma. Okay. no, that's on the list. Yeah. Uh, Oser, A O S U R. No. Wow, guys. You guys give me a lot of homework. Yeah. yeah. I <laughs> you guys are sending Vivi to school. Yeah. Um, all right. This last one I, I, we have talked about before, SPPI. Yes. I'm waiting. I, I uh, talked to you guys about it at a 350. I am just waiting for news. They have a drug that's actually going to help, you know, neutropenia. It's, um, it's one of uh, it's big side effects with a lot of drugs. Uh, is I think it's for neutropenia. Yeah, um, it's for neutropenia. So now I'm like just trying to to keep keep my. Uh, this is a second. I'll go here. Trying to keep my my DD straight. I own at a three fifty. Um, I like the company Spectrum. So let me just go here. I don't want to give you guys bad information. Okay. So we're waiting on, we're first sure we're waiting on, um, okay. We're waiting on inspection for the, yeah, chemotherapy induced neutropenia, which I think it's awesome. A majority of the problems with the, look, I had it. See, I know by heart, um, a lot of these patients going through chemo have, uh, you know, chemo induced neutropenia and it's, it's not a good side effect. So it's going to address that. Um, it says here that it was supposed to be, um, they deferring the action from October 20th. That was the date, uh, for the PDUFA. And so I'm just waiting, you know, um, we can, uh, we can get news anytime. So I, I'm holding because I, I like the data and uh, I and I think that's going to be a really important drug that has an amat need. So SPPI is a hold for me. Awesome. Uh, we have a couple more in the chat. I'm thinking we can do one last one. Okay. Um, so here, here are some options. We have uh, BIB, uh, B-I-I-B, Biogen. We have M-R-E-O, P-I-R-S. Um, C R B P, 
those are a couple of the ones coming through. Okay. Um, I like MREO. I really do. Um, it's uh, I've traded them before. I would have just have to see what is the next um, catalyst for them. But um, I like that stock. I really do. Um, so it's, uh, let me see here, Maria Pharma. I would have just liked to know if anybody in the chat to have, I know the last time we had news, I was able to trade this one and make really good money. So I assume that the float is really tight because um, it was a good day for me that day. Uh, so you guys have any, um, what is the site for this company? Jeez, I cannot even find the site. Can you tell me what the float is, why I'm looking for the site? Okay, I found the site. Yeah, the float. Oh, I have no data on the float. All right. Go to Finviz. Okay. All right. On Finviz. Uh, okay, I like that they have a rare diseases. Um, they are, um, they have a for osteogenesis imperfecta. This is a rare disease, um, and they are like on a phase three. Um, and then they are uh, two, three, four products in phase two for cancer, infertility, acute exacerbations of a COPD, which is. You know, it's not very, uh, it's not a, it's a kind of a me too uh, company, but uh, I really like the one from ovarian cancer. It's partner and has up to $300 million in milestones and royalties. So that's awesome. So um, yeah, no, I like the company. I, I would have just have to look how much cash they have left, you know, and uh, what is institutional ownership and what is the next catalyst? So that's the three questions you, sh you should ask yourself. You know, just, just to see how, how long you, you can hold this. Because I told you guys, company, it, it, like, I really regret not buying Biocrest at all my 18,000 shares when they came out at a 480 right after um, right after the, um, the offering, right? But there was a lot of risk because it wasn't, it was before FDA approval. So I had like at the time, I think 4,000 shares, um, which I thought for me, it was already a lot of gamble. Then I start adding, you know, so I'm doing like cost average. So I'm going to take my earnings from a ARDX and I'm going to put towards BCRX, my goal is to have a 20,000 shares of a BCRX. Um, so I wish, so if I had it to do all over again with the BCRX, I would have started with 480 and just continue to do cost average, right? So for this company here, um, if if you guys believe in it and there is, you know, and you holding these long-term and just not swinging, you guys can buy a thousand shares today, and then when there's an offering, you added another thousand shares. And then when there's a catalyst, you're gonna have two thousand shares. You sell a half of the thousand shares in cat into catalyst, and then buy back when they have to raise money again. So that's how I do for companies that don't have um, don't have a commercial product because they're gonna have they're gonna run out of money. So that's my plan to do with LC. Uh, LCTX, I feel like this company is going to be amazing. You know, the retina degeneration. Uh, so um, I, I'm, I'm, my plan is just to continue to add it at 280. And then when we have an offering, because in 10 months, they're going to run out of money. I'm going to add more to to um, to my to my long term account. So I think that would be it. I'm muted there. All right. Well, Vivi, thank you so much again for an awesome You're episode welcome. of the Biotech Buzz. And chat, thank you so much. You guys provided a lot of uh, new yes. tickers to look at to get today. So I did all my homework for AGN. See, I had a <laughs> and everything else. So I like this company. So that's definitely a good one. So thank you, guys. I think we can all collaborate together. You give me tickers and I'll validate through, you know, through my, my DDs and categorize then why I think they would be a good candidate, you know, so. Absolutely, absolutely. So awesome show today. Uh, thanks everyone for coming to hang out. And so no, no next Tuesday, but the next yeah, Thursday, right? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna go see my mother-in-law in Las Vegas. So it's gonna be kind of hard. So she just had a surgery. So I'll see you guys next uh, Thursday. All right, see you everyone. Have a good weekend and uh, we'll catch you in the next Biotech Buzz. 
Peace. Okay, bye you guys.